All right, B. Slade, the microphone is hot, and as promised earlier in the hour, we have another guest in the studio. We know that Noise of Summer is coming up on August 20th of 2022. The bands are Quiet Riot, El Victoria, and this local band, Corrupt. We actually have the pleasure of having Carl Reichenbach. He's the founder and the drummer. Goes way back to 1982 with this band. Again, his name Carl Reichenbach, the founder of Corrupt, and he is on the horn right now. Carl, welcome to the Muay Thai Metal Studios with Ron Mano and Byron Slade. Thanks, guys, for having me. Not a problem, man. You pumped for noise of summer? Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely love doing big outdoor shows. I'm hoping it's packed to the gills. We do as well. That's why we're doing this interview today. We are going to pump this thing as hard as we can, get as many people out there. Have you ever played, have you ever opened for Quiet Riot prior? Actually, yeah. A few, actually, a few times. We go back with them when it was actually the original four. No kidding. Um, yeah, we played with them at a club in Springfield called Jack's. Wow, okay, I remember and, Jax. Yeah, we actually played one night, and when they came out, we I guess we were really cranked pretty loud because they cranked it a little more. And a number of people actually went out because the volume was too much. Wow, and it was, that's <laughs> <good>. <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny, but we've gotten in trouble at that club a few times before. That's we've been, awesome. We've been kicked off the stage because everybody was singing with us, and... Yeah. Wow, that is really cool. <laughs> hey, look, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna ask you to blow a little dust off a brain cell you haven't used in probably 20 years. But uh, do you remember what years they were? What with the shows? Yeah, with Choir oh Ride. Oh my god! Oh my god! I know. Nah. I, I, <sighs> let's just say yeah, it's kind of you know what my corrupt life has kind of as much as I can remember it's just been like my life every day. Right. So, 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 like differentiating, like between band, I can say, oh, that was during the Aubrey phase, or that was during the Robbie phase, or whatever. You know, going by guitar players. Right. I can, re- I can remember it that way, but <laughs> I can never put a date on it. I got so you. Know, like, that's cool, ah. man. But, <laughs> I'm sure it was like '87, '88, maybe. Probably it's that's ah. Uh, you know what? It might have been even a little bit later than that. It could have been as late as. 89 okay that's maybe cool. even as late as 90 i don't know i got you i don't man. know i can't remember when they stopped when the four original when carlos well it's not the original but carlos Cazava, the guys on the first album i got when, you you know when they went when they stopped playing together i can't remember when that was but i mean i've played with them when there was other guys like they've played m3 yeah, when we course. played okay and i had i had i even had frankie come up and see my set and go that is a really cool drum set. <laughs> nice. That is very cool. He's sw- sw- one of the sweetest guys alive. Or not, well, it's one of the sweetest guys that was alive at that time. No, I know. And, I, and yeah. I've, I've heard the same thing. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Absolutely. I've heard the same thing. Well, listen, you threw out a couple of names. Why don't we talk a little talk a little bit about the current lineup? Who who are the, are the 97 Underground listeners going to see uh, on stage with Corrupt? You know, meaning your band. Um, you know, come come August twentieth. Well, the, the, this is as much as the original lineup can be anymore because Sean McAuliffe has passed away. But we have, of course, me, Dave Beal, the original bass player, right. and Aubrey, Aubrey Bad- Bradley, the original guitarist, and we have a, an overly exceptional lead singer and frontman, Lee Smith, who Aubrey brought to me. Uh, to do Sean's we played a, a benefit for right after Sean passed away mm-hmm. and they they were going to come up with their band and do it but their bass player and drummer couldn't come so Dave and I filled in for them and somebody announced it as the closest to the original lineup of corrupt as you could get anymore wow. and which our two guitar players we were playing with at the time <laughs> and this was right before m3 remember okay. the two guys we were playing with at the time were there and they're jumping salty like so what's up are we out or what i'm like oh guys I, I didn't have anything to do with that that wasn't supposed to be said dave and i are supposed to be filling in for their band push it's not supposed to have anything to do with corrupt oh, just because you know it wasn't supposed to be mentioned we just went in to fill in wow but 
but of course when we got done like everybody left that was like the high po- and there was still a couple bands to play I was, I, that's weird for me too but <laughs> it, it's yeah, i'm proud of it but it's weird i'm like don't leave you know <laughs> right man you guys I mean, the lineup on the CD did a did a did a uh, uh, like it wasn't I don't know if you'd call it a battle of the bands it was just an all day thing at a at a Harley Davidson dealership in Laurel, and the the there was a little a girl a young girl who actually had won one of those contests one of those TV contests that was playing right after us right and and as soon as we got done you could have heard crickets wow. And I and I stood there and watched her and I like when she got done I'm apologizing to her because I'm like I you know I don't know I I, I don't feel like all those people came just to see us <laughs> but <laughs> you know it was it was just really strange I I feel bad for people when that happens but you know so so I got so, a question for you Carl okay you, you had a storied career playing at the Crossroads Bar in Glen Burnie Maryland you had some funny <laughs> stories to tell about that. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> well, we we practically lived there. I mean, we we played every six weeks. I don't know. We we played for six weeks, and whether anybody played or they played and nobody showed, they covered their bills for a couple of months every show we played. So they actually started doing really well. Then they started bringing better bands in, and then Sean actually got started actually doing the booking. He was uh, he was bringing the bands in. He'd go listen to them. He'd go. They'd call him and he'd go down and see a show they were doing or get a tape of them or whatever. He actually started like trying to get better entertainment in there. So okay. it actually did change the bar's life. As far as funny stories, I don't know. I performed my first official wedding there. Wow. Okay. Uh, our our webmaster at the time wanted to have himself marry. He wanted to marry his girl at a corrupt show. And I said, how about if I do you one better and I'll get ordained and I'll marry you? That's, that sounds like a WBAL <laughs> news story. But it, but I'll tell you what, it happened, and now there's a 20-minute video you could probably find on YouTube called A Corrupt Kind of Wedding. No kidding. That's wild. Yeah. Like and it's I'm right. I'm standing see. right in front of my drum set. You can see the corrupt Carl tar- tarp laying over it. And, uh, you know, it was weird for me, but I've actually done like five of them. And I, I decided after the last one I'm probably not going to do it anymore because hiding behind a drum set and talking is a lot easier than just standing there. No, I understand. So. <laughs> I definitely understand. Well, I tell you what, we're doing a whole lot of talking, and this is great stuff. Thank you again for taking time out of your very busy schedule, Carl. We are very, very happy to have you Dude, here. Dude, if you want to have something different next time, you can call me back, and in 10 minutes we can have just as much oh, all I'm over sure. something different. <laughs> I am sure. Yeah, we kind of blew his wad with the with the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Sorry. He, you don't have to us... like a, I just, I'm thinking you're going to cut it in pieces, so I'm just like talking. No, but the behind the scenes stuff, there was a magic happening there. Oh yeah, no doubt about it's, it. It's different when, when we say, oh, okay, we're going to, we're going to, we're recording now. <laughs> oh, the lights geez. are, the lights I'm are sorry. on now. Okay. So, I'm sorry. There's two Carls. There's, there's Carl oh, off God, the did record. I, did I change that bad? Did I change that much? <laughs> yeah, there's Carl Not off the record. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> then there's professional Carl. No, we're just kidding. But they do have an album cut, Ron. You want to touch base with that? Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. These stories are great, and we're going to talk some more. But let's talk about the CD, Carl. What year did it come out? Oh my God! See, oh, man, see, you know what? I'm telling here. you, my life is a blur. But I'll tell you, I can, I can, I can actually find this one. Hold on. Okay. I, um, <laughs> he's he's going to use his Google to find the <laughs> No, Google. Hell, I got a, I got a copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Need Where the liner says, notes. Uh, uh, 2013. That's All right, right. So in 2013, this is called Blood Brothers, correct? Yes. All right, and we're going to. Get- Go it's ahead. kind of funny. It's on um, Rockenbach Productions. If you think of my last name, you'll realize that's something I came up with 20 years ago or 30 years ago. It's just like a, a spoof on my name. It's pretty cool. That is cool. <laughs> that's very cool. Well, we're going to do it right now for you because these folks are probably dying to see Corrupt on stage. But to tide you over until the noise of summer on August 20th, 2022, we're going to give you something from Blood Brothers right now called... Ragtop. You're only going to hear it here at 97underground.com, Baltimore's Pure Rock Worldwide.
97underground.com, Baltimore's Pure Rock Worldwide. The band is corrupt. The CD, Blood Brothers, the jam is called Ragtop. We have the pleasure of having a founding member, the founder, as a matter of fact, and drummer of the band Corrupt, Mr. Carl Reichenbach, in the studio with us right now. Carl, welcome back. Hey, thanks, guys. All right, man, you want to take us back to the CD and how, how that all came about, how many songs is on it, where they can find it, you know, any merchandise? Um, actually, we've got lots of merchandise. We don't have a lot of the hard copy CDs anymore because we're on probably every streaming network you can find. Cool. I know we're on Spotify. I know we're on Apple Music. I know we're on Amazon Music um, and some of the smaller ones. But uh, the guy who did our engineering and produced the um, CD for us was a kid. And he had this metal mind. It was great. One of his favorite guitar players was uh, Dream Theater's John Petrucci. Okay. Um, and the kid was an amazing guitar player. He just looked like he would be working, you know, he was like a geek, you know, the, you know, the horn rim glasses and the short hair and all that. But he could scream playing. But he did a great job with this CD. I thought he he did this in a small budget with a small studio and he tore it apart. That's awesome. Where was it done, Carl? What uh, it was, it, actually most of it was done in his little recording room in his house. No kidding. Well, most here's, of it, the, the he, drums were done. The drums were done in a studio in Tacoma Park, and I can't even remember the name of it. Okay, but they were everything was done here locally in Maryland. Yeah, everything was done in Maryland. Yeah, that you know they had done a bunch of the vocals. It was funny. I did all the drums for the whole CD in one day. No kid, that's great. I, because we did it in a studio, so we were paying for the time for that. So cool. I came prepared, and we we had a really rough time because everybody in the band was having a problem playing with a click track, track except sure. for me and one of the guitar players. Wow. And then so I said, look, everybody else, just go away. I said, you stay, and you're gonna we're gonna get me through all this. And we did it, and we knocked it out. That's awesome, man. That's really <laughs> cool. How was I? I know the times were obviously a lot different. We're going back almost ten years. You know, yeah. back to 2013 when Blood Brothers dropped. But um, at the time, how how was the reception of the CD? Everybody loved it that heard it. Um, we didn't make it available enough. We were we didn't want to get involved with that. Sean and I were like sending it to label. We were sending it to radio stations and giving it to people. And but right, I mean, right before Blood Brothers was done, we actually had another guitar player and we did a four song EP called Bite Me. Okay. And I actually have tons of those CDs left. No kidding. But, but three out of the four songs on that are on Blood Brothers. Oh, okay. There, and there's okay. another one on there called In God We Trust, which I didn't care for that one a whole lot either. But it was specifically written 100% by the guitar player that left. Wow. So I was like, I'm not touching that one. So. I got gotcha. <laughs> How many tracks on Blood Brothers? Eleven, I believe. I okay, think it's so 11. it's a full length. There's a, there's a, cool. We threw we threw a we threw a, 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 a slow a slow song on there. It was actually a song Sean had written for his wife for their wedding, and we, they re-recorded it. And actually, there's a maraca sound on there. It's not even me. It's the producer. He had a, a little uh, plastic jar and a, and some rice in his kitchen, and he threw it in there and faked it. No it kidding. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is so cool, man. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, Rick, there was there were some crazy stories. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's been plenty of crazy. I mean, with you guys doing this since what, 1982? Yeah. We used to try. We used to travel. We used to play up in, uh, down the street from where the guys from Wrathchild America and Souls at Zero, what they became Souls at Zero, or whatever. They um, they used to like live right down the street from this little club. We would play. We would play on a Wednesday night. Okay. In West, it was like a three-hour drive. We would drive home because we would be off Thursday, but we had to play Friday and Saturday. And we drove home back and forth every time. No kidding. Yeah, we have to. And up there, you'd have to play till three in the morning or something. And by the time we get home, I was like walking straight in from the show, jumping in the shower, getting my clothes on, and going to work. Wow. Where was this? Yeah. Where were you driving this, to? Uh, oh, Mar oh, not Martinsburg. It was in Inwood, West Virginia. Holy Inwood? cow. I think it's Inwood. And the, the club was called the Underground. No kid what? Yeah, and the guys and the guys and the guys from the um and the guys from um Rathchild used to come up and just BS with us and hang out with us out in the parking lot on our breaks. Holy cow. <laughs> 
you know, it's a, yeah. I, I mean, I'm still friends with Brad. Um, on French, uh, unfortunately, uh, Shannon, I believe, had a stroke and doesn't remember much of the uh, much of us. He doesn't. He didn't recognize me when I was trying to talk to him. Anyway, oh, no the last time it was very depressing. I saw him at Jack's nightclub actually. Okay, that was the last time I saw him. I mean, up close enough to be able to talk to him. Wow, that's incredible. But, but yeah, we used to play all the time. I remember he wasn't even old enough to be in the club, and he was in the band. Wow. Yeah, he was really young. But we did that with Dave too. Dave, our bass player, we snuck him in a few times. We used to sneak him. We used to sneak him out. He'd be on per restriction with his mother, and we'd sneak him out of his room. He lived on the first level of an apartment building. We'd sneak him out of his room. He'd throw his guitar out. We'd grab it, and he'd run to the car, and we'd take off. And she'd be screaming out the door. We'd go, "We'll have him back after practice." No kidding. As I, <laughs> And that's Dave yeah. Beal. And that's Dave Beal. Current bass yep. player Dave Beal. Wow, you guys yeah. go way back. Yes, we do. I, and actually, he and I work together every day. That's awesome. So I see him all the time. That's so really he, cool. he, and, he and I are the ones that are close to Baltimore. And then Aubrey and Lee are the are our Eastern, Eastern Shore boys, which yeah. they, Aubrey lives like literally like a stone's throw from Ocean City. And Lee lives... Um, in like Mount Vernon, Maryland or something, some little place. No kidding, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Well, I tell you what, why, why don't we jump back? This is all great stuff, but obviously we, you know, we, we've got time. I mean, we, you know, we've got to watch our time, I should say. Um, yeah. Why don't we do another one from Blood Brothers? Which one do you think we should do? How about The Calling? Let's do it right here on the Muay Thai Metal Show. It's Carl Reichenbach, founder and drummer of the band Corrupt. They will be playing live on August 20th, 2022 at Noise of Summer at the Anne Arundel County Fairgrounds. This, from Blood Brothers, is The Calling at 97underground.com. Baltimore's pure rock. We're rock. It's a calling of the world to save us from this hell. I peace we sell the dust. Okay. 
97underground.com. Baltimore's Pure Rock Worldwide, the station your mother warned you about. And we have a guy in the studio that we're sure your mother warned you about. His name is Carl Reichenbach, happens to be the founder and drummer of local band Corrupt. That song was called The Calling. It was from the CD from 2013 called Blood Brothers. Carl, final hey thoughts. Guys. We're going to wrap, wrap this thing up, man. All right. Noise of summer, Carl. What, what do you, are yeah, you, what? you, you going to talk to Rudy Sarzo? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I will. Actually, you know, when we first got on Facebook, he, he and I were friends, and I don't even remember how it happened. I get, you know, from, <laughs> from playing down at Jack's with all the 80s guys, I got friend requests from people like, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I was like, what? He's sending me a friend request? I'm nobody for that. Whatever. But it was great. But That's... then he, he changed it to one of those uh, fan pages. Yeah, right. Where you got to just, yeah, you're not really. Yeah, friend. Well, you're if, not really if, friends. If you're getting those kind of weird requests, Carl, have you have you ever hung out with CC DeVille? <sighs> Actually, before they were a big deal at Hammer Jacks. No way. Yeah, b- before. I mean, it was, I mean, we didn't hang out like tight, but yeah, they were there at the same time. We were around. They, they weren't even as big as kicks at that time. Well, Ryan, if you're gonna go there, I bet he knows Ricky Rocket. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't know any of them really good. At, like personally, I know a little about them. That's about it's, it. It's I didn't, it. We we just we just uh, we kind of made fun of them. We just roasted you because <laughs> uh, on the Muay Thai Metal Show, it's an it's a running joke about the. About the CC DeVille guy. <laughs> you just got sucked in, Carl. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. That's all right. okay. No, it's it's worked for all of us. It's, yeah, it does. <laughs> hey, listen, let's seriously, let's jump back to Noise of Summer. What can we expect from Corrupt? Obviously, we don't want you to give away your whole set list because, you know, we want the listeners to be surprised. I mean, you could throw a few gems out there, but just, you know, kind of, kind of what kind of set you think you're going to be doing, and I'll let you take it from there. Well, I know, I know. They, the singer asked me what I wanted to put in. I said I wanted to crunch because we're only playing what an hour. So if we, I wanted to come out and hit hard, but corrupt has been for for forty years. We've been a really good uh, cover band. So most of what we usually do is covers, but we go from, you know, we would like we'll probably open. We, I won't even tell you what. We'll, we'll open up with one band and roll right into another one and it's seamless and we sound like all the bands right i mean uh, when, when sean was in the band he was like a chameleon he he could sound like he could sound like um queen's right and the very next breath sound like acdc and he, he was perfect wow that's cool and 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 lee is very very close to the same thing he's and he's a great front man too he kind of Close. but anyway we'll definitely do a couple of originals okay. i can promise a couple of priest songs because I'm, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. There's there's some uh, thought in the brewing about a tribute to to Judas Priest by Corrupt. Okay. And we'd actually add another member to the band and have two guitars and do like a whole, It would be. I think we would call it Corrupt Priest. Oh, that's really wow, cool. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is if, really if anybody, cool. anybody had made it to the show um, last uh, couple of weeks ago, we did 11 Priest songs back to back. And all you could hear in the crowd was whistles and screams. And it was like, man, this is cool. Because <laughs> we all love priests. So it's, it was just like having fun. You know? Perfect so. band to uh, yeah, idolize. That's definitely yeah. cool. And I don't feel like I see any of those. You see tribute bands from Motley Crue like every day. And, you, and in, as a matter of fact, Dave happens to be in one. Okay. Um, and, <laughs> of course, he looks like Nicky Six. Yeah, he does so look like a lot like Nicky Six. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> Cool. That's funny. Hey, let, let's give a quick plug for the show. It's called Noise of Summer. It's coming here to Crofton, Maryland, B. Slade. Is that, is that Crofton with it? Or Crownsville? It's, actually, Crownsville. it's Crownsville. Crownsville. Okay, Crownsville, Maryland. It's on the Anne Arundel County State Fairgrounds. Here's your lineup. Quiet Riot's going to headline. El Victoria's in there. Corrupt, who we are on the phone right now with the drummer, Carl Reichenbach. You're also going to see what a band called Ultimate Def Leppard, obviously a Def Leppard tribute band, and Highway to Hell, an ACDC tribute. You can go to a website called TripleCreekEvents.com. I guess that's the promoter, TripleCreekEvents.com. Scroll down to where you see the lineup. You'll see a picture of Rudy Zarzo, and to the right, you'll see a big orange box that says Get Tickets. Get on out there. 
Get your tickets, and we'd love to see you out there August 20th. And Go ahead, Beast Lake. That's too hard for you to type in, Ron. You can just type in Noise of Summer. It's N O Y Z E, Noise of Summer. Right. And then it'll and take the website you. website will pop right, right up. Right. It'll take you to the TripleCreekEvents.com. All right. Sitting in with Carl Reichenbach, founder and drummer of the bit local band Corrupt. Corrupt will be playing that night in front of Quiet Riot. And we just about got to wrap it up, Carl. Parting thoughts. Oh man, just everybody try to get out there and hang with us. We'll we'll have some merchandise for sale. We got T-shirts and all kinds of hats and even corrupt necklaces. Um, just get with us. Come out and see us and let's rock. That's awesome. Wrap it up for us, B Slade. You've been on with corrupt. It's Carl Reichenbach, the drummer on the Muay Thai Metal Show at 97underground.com. Baltimore's pure rock. <laughs>